nhliberty.org. nhliberty.org. Around 1986, Richard Nixon made a prediction that turned out to be prophetic. You may not like Nixon, I don't like Nixon either, but he was right about certain things related to the Soviet Union. He said that the Soviet Empire would undergo some kind of transformation or fall as a result of a computer revolution, a technological or information revolution. His predictions put him light years ahead of the CIA in terms of recognizing the future. Actually, the Soviet Union sort of fell before the computers really had a chance to do that much. And I think what's actually happening is Richard Nixon's prediction is coming true more in the United States. The prediction about computers and information revolutions bringing downfalls. We've seen how the Internet has already changed the way government behaves. For instance, if you look at the handling of the Ed Brown standoff in Plainfield, New Hampshire, this was a situation somewhat similar to the Ruby Ridge standoff in Idaho. And you had a government that was really much more wicked under the Bush administration, uh, Bush 2 administration, uh, handling Ed Brown, uh, as opposed to the first Bush administration, which was handling Randy Weaver. First Bush administration, in my mind, was much more benign and yet it killed people uh, during the standoff. The standoff was triggered by federal entrapment. I mean, the behavior was just awful. It was far worse than the way they handled Ed, uh, with the exception of the fact that there were some very excessive prison sentences handed down in Ed Brown's situation. But anyway, this was because of the Internet. The Internet forced... Bush too into a sort of soft fascist approach uh, towards Ed Brown. But that was just Internet version 1.0. We're currently experimenting with Internet 2.0, or I guess I should say we're in the Internet 2.0 revolution. And in theory, that should force an even greater level of caution on the authorities. But that doesn't even count the real revolution, which I guess we could call Internet 3.0, which is a monetary Internet. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Feathercoin. These currencies have the potential to rip away from the authorities their monopoly over currency. Keep moving, please. We're on our property right now. Now, this is considered the right-of-way, if I'm not mistaken, is that correct? If I was over there, I'd be on your property, right? So, so never mind the field day we've already had with social media peeing all over the government's cornflakes for the last few years. That may be nothing compared to what the people will be able to do with their own currency. Scenes like this, back in 2007, thereabouts, seemed like game changers to me. Little defeats almost every week that we would inflict on the government just by whipping out our cameras and our YouTube. But they may have been nothing compared to a people's currency. And you know, a people's currency maybe nothing compared to what comes next. What does come next? The 3D printing revolution? A robotic revolution? An AI revolution? A hacking revolution? Imagine anonymous, squared, anonymous on steroids, anonymous multiplied by the thousands, we only know right now what we've experienced so far, but something else is coming. Technology keeps multiplying. And I think Adam Kokesh is right when he says the game is up for the government. 
I don't know what the timing's going to be. I'm sure the government will take some sort of preemptive action to try and keep the game from being up, to try and change the dialogue, the debate, the direction of technology. They might even do what I call uh, you know, a, a project renaissance. For those of you who read the author, the science fiction author, Werner Vinge, he had this idea that government would eventually take some sort of apocalyptic step to push technology back as far as possible. That would enable them to maintain their power. In his novel, Project Renaissance involved a nuclear strike against their own countries by, but you know, a sort of world government. Soviets didn't do that. No nuclear power ever has. But we really are following along a track of history. Uh, the, you know, the printing press changed the, the level of power that the Catholic Church had over Europe. The small, cheap video camera changed the game in former Yugoslavia. The internet saved Ed Brown and probably saved a lot of lives during the Arab Spring. It's now striking the root of the Federal Reserve System very tentatively, its currency is, and something else will come after. Despite all the cruel things that can be done with it, the government drones, the echelon, the phone monitoring, Technological advances generally work toward the favor of the people these days. So take heart and start thinking about what kind of graceful way out we can offer to the authorities. What we can do to protect their individual human rights after they're no longer in power. We want to be like uh, like Jobert de Lafitte in France. Uh, the, better known in, in America as the Marquis de Lafayette, uh, the man who opposed the French monarchy, but took as much action as he could to protect the lives of the French monarchs once they were uh, losing power. We liberty folk in New Hampshire do not want a French revolution in the United States. We do not want a Bolshevik revolution in the United States. We want an Arab Spring. We want a, vel a velvet revolution like Czechoslovakia had. or 1990 Moscow. We want everyone to go home safe, including all our enemies. But we want their powers reduced so that we can keep going home safe too. How do we get there? Nixon predicted that we're going there, essentially, although he may have predicted it in the wrong country. The question is how? This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. They're attempting to make a clean sweep against politicians that are authoritarian and laws that are authoritarian. But they need your help. Join them at nhliberty.org. Again, that's nhliberty.org. Fighting to keep you free. Fighting at the State House every day. Oh, and I should say, don't join them. Join us, because I am a member of the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. NHLiberty.org